Hi Capricorn, it's so good to see you. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Chandler and this is your intuitive energy reading for this week. It is Earth Sign Thursday and as you guys know, I post weekly for you guys and I'm excited to see what comes up. This will work for you if you have a Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus or Jupiter. Okay, depending on what subject you're looking into today, there could be some information here for you. Of course, if you're a cross watcher, uh, feel free to reverse or switch up the roles if necessary. These characteristics can be switched around a little bit. What else? Uh, yes, so Capricorn, I'm actually pre recording this because I have some dental work to do today. So I will be out of office uh, and out for the weekend. Um, but you know, I didn't want to miss another week for you guys. Okay. I haven't been around. I'd missed last week actually. Um, because the emotions and stuff were just so high and you know, I do apologize. I feel like I've been really bad at earth sign Thursday very recently. There's been a couple Thursdays where I've just been a little all over the board. So I've made it a personal, a personal goal of mine, you know, just to get better at earth sign readings, get better at, um, you know, providing for you guys more consistently. Of course, I love tarot and I love my Capricorn. So I never want you guys to feel left out uh, or any earth sign for that matter. So this is definitely going to be a special read for you guys who are tapped in and tuned in to me. We're going to start with my Sacred Geometry Oracle deck, which is a really good deck to provide you insights on how you're vibrating, right? How you are... Um, you know, attracting and what you're potentially feeling this week. So we have three, like literally pop out of the deck. So let's see what we have. Discernment, soul time, and synergy. 40, 41, and 20. So four, five, and two, okay? So numerologically, those are the vibrations that they carry. We're looking at soul time, okay? Being that of a time of waiting. Someone here is in contemplation or, you know, taking some time alone just to figure some things out. Now that's probably a good idea because we have your planet, Saturn in retrograde. Um, we also have like six other planets in retrograde. So it's quite a doozy of a time and energy. Um, but when we're looking at soul time, this is trying to establish more foundation and grounding beneath yourself, which I think is actually going to really pay off. The frequency of soul time asks us to allow the possibilities of a new reality to emerge. One that embraces the concept that, while the corporeal body is mortal, the soul is timeless, limitless, and infinite. Okay, so really getting in touch with your soul. That's kind of like a hermit energy, to be completely honest. It's more of like going within sort of energy. Then we have synergy, okay, which is obviously this integration energy. Integrating the newness, maybe you're coming upon some new information. Maybe you're, you know, seeking new energies. Maybe you're trying to integrate yourself in new ways. Maybe integrate new ideas into your life, which I think is really positive, actually, because when we have synergy, it can mean that there may have been an abrupt change or something that has changed very recently, but that you're adapting pretty well, okay? The frequency of synergy supports our allowance and acceptance of not so obvious, never seen before combinations and unions that result in new ways of functioning, working, thinking, relating, loving, and being. It reminds us to embrace the unfamiliar so that new yet exciting co-creations can give birth to a new reality. And then finally, we have discernment. All right. So I think that some of you are really trying to think about something more in depth. Something is definitely um, coming up right? There could be massive change or you could be taking some quiet time. I'm hearing taking an L. Okay. So you could feel kind of like, um, you've lost out on an opportunity or that something didn't go your way. Right. And so when we have discernment, we're looking at you discerning what your next move is, um, trying to adapt, trying to overcome the challenges potentially with this synergy card and soul time. I'm hearing also time out. Okay. So time out of something to, to gather your thoughts. That's what I'm getting for this card. The frequency of discernment supports our ability to view the world and the people around us from, from a place of inner balance and detachment, yet with compassion and wisdom, okay? So I'm hearing that some of you could have been involved in something, you know, something that may not have actually involved you, or maybe you got in the middle of something, right? That didn't go so well. Let's look, um, let's look at this energy here of positive um, affirmations for you. This is actually the Personal Powers deck. It's by Deja Druitt, and it's just the cutest 
most lovely deck for my watchers and my viewers. Um, filled with positive affirmations. Okay, so your personal power for the week, Capricorn, is... Okay, two. Interesting. Uh, Gemini got the same, okay, uh, I am forgiveness. Forgiving someone, forgiving a situation, or leaving a situation without really wanting to get revenge or get even. Okay, that was very much the Gemini's energy reading was was kind of like, should I, shouldn't I, I don't know. And of course, I said, don't do it. The universe isn't going to let this happen, first of all, not in your favor. And then secondly, it's going to take the higher road if you just affirm to yourself, I'm forgiving, not for other people, right? It doesn't have to satisfy your needs in the moment. This is, a, this is talking about not feeling satisfied in the moment, but forgiving anyways. Okay, and this is a number eight. So this comes through very strongly as karma, very strongly as karma. And then we also have number 33, which I am fearless. I am fearless. So affirm these things to yourself um, this week, Capricorn, because we do have your horns coming through here, talking about being very sturdy, right? Where there have been disappointments, whether it be in situations or people, you have to know that things are going to be okay. Things always work out. Things are going to be okay. There may be some significant life lessons here because whenever we have soul time, it's kind of like your soul wants to talk to you. Your soul really wants you to tune into it. Your soul has a message for you. Your soul wants you to change. And so those challenges are going to be coming up. Quite literally, very boldly, very clearly. Okay? So this is beautiful. Divine feminine energy. Let's see what the divine masculines are looking into um, this week. Now, this doesn't have to be divine masculine as in just men, right? We all have divine feminine and masculine within us. So let's see what comes up as your ambitions, your goals, right? What is happening for Capricorn this week? Slow moving energies. You guys are definitely taking a taking a time out, right? So we have four. One did fall on its face on the floor. Okay, so hold on just a sec. Okay. Interesting. You guys, this is really talking, this is like really similar to the Gemini energy actually. Um, because you have the same energy as, as they do as far as the challenge or the affirmation that you need to affirm yourself. Being fearless and strong, but in a very balanced and harmonious way, right? Not revenge, not vengeful. We have freedom and victory uh, belong to those who remain strong and true despite temptation. Really interesting. So temptation has been coming up very strongly because we've just had a Capricornian lunar eclipse. Now, when we have a Capricornian lunar eclipse, we have to think about temptation, the things that actually lock us in to bad habits, lock us into old karma, teach us really hard lessons. So when we're talking about freedom and victory, it seems like some of you are really wanting to be released, really wanting to have this cycle be over with and done with. Um, some of you are needing to really remain strong, really remain strong and have compassion, not only for yourself, but for others as we're all sort of going through the, this, this really wild trajectory right now of wanting to give into temptation but that actually being a lower vibration that actually being a really low vibration that you can kind of see working itself out in like hedonism where you know it's satisfaction in the moment um, but really happiness stagnates spiritual growth stagnates um, and you end up developing a really weird karma okay through that kind of energy through through habitual patterns like that giving into temptation hedonism or just sexual desires that keep you in a rut so i'm really feeling that strongly for for one of you guys out there now i do feel like one of these cards does want to be read and this is the one that i've pulled over so it says we do not need to await more resources we need to act and we will find abundance comes to us so i really like that there's a positive note here for you guys to to not wait on anyone else's approval, um, not really rely on anyone else to give you approval or to say it's okay. You guys have power 
this week. You guys have power to accomplish your goals and you have resources around you that empower your actions. Okay, but I really feel kind of like this this universe right now is really closely watching because we are in this Capricornian moon. We're developing karma at a rapid pace, really rapid. And and it's not going to take long to show face. It's really not going to take long to show face. And so you have to really be discerning about how you act, how you treat others. If you can forgive, then that is absolutely the higher road. Let's see what my spirit uh, tarot has to say. For Capricorn, please. For Capricorn. Some of my most lovely and near and dear friends and family are Capricorn. I love you guys so much. You guys are so sturdy, so stable, so dependable, so funny. I always say that. Like, you guys have this really weird humor that I like. I like it. Let's, um... Let's ask what we need to see. What we need to see this week for Capricorn. What's Capricorn been up to? What does Capricorn need to know? Okay. Prosperity begins. Okay. This is a new foundation. Something that is potentially brand new, sparkling, shining coin, you know, blessings, um, uh, abundance, right? When we're talking about abundance coming to you, we're talking about you actually realizing that there is a higher road. There is something that you don't need to wait for. You don't need to contemplate your existence for too long. Um, this just means that you got caught up in something that actually stagnated you or slowed you down. This is the universe saying, we have something here if you, if you decide to start new, right? If you want this, you can have it. So we have the Ace of Pentacles coming up uh, first. Now that's really good. New start, brand new beginning. But I do kind of feel like a catch. I, and that, I will just say that I do kind of feel like a catch. Like, you guys have to be really aware of how you think, um, how you proceed, what your reaction, reaction may be, because we have this coming out in reverse, and I don't typically take it in reverse, but I, I just sort of take a mental note of it, um, and it sort of spun. So I, that tells me that you're in contemplation of how to proceed, how to react, or how to handle this situation. And we have triumph being that of a energy of, of can cancer, okay, cancer, um, chariot energy in the major arcana so moving forward with your head and your heart um but with this in reverse it could mean that someone's um looking for short-term satisfaction and that's kind of weird that it would come up that way because it does it doesn't seem like someone has a very strong follow-through a very strong moral character um if we're talking about someone which would maybe explain why you're needing to be fearless and forgive because it does kind of seem like someone took took a lot of value away or you were you had value taken away somehow. Okay, whoa. Wow. This is like really all of a sudden heavy uh, Capricorn. So, you know, before we get started, I really kind of feel like um, I'm getting this energy like you couldn't have anticipated this. Or maybe, maybe you did anticipate it, but it just went the other way. Um, you know, something like, something like a disclosure happened. Something like, um, you know, realization, because we have disruption being the tower moment, and it's in reverse, again, okay, and then we have harmony in reverse, uh, the lover's card, major arcana, so when we see major arcana, this is definitely non-negotiable, it's definitely being taken from you, or you may feel like that, um, and, and when we're talking about needing your discernment, we really, we really need to talk about that, because if you're in pain, and if you're grieving this loss, because you kind of feel like you've lost a foundation potentially with this person, then I would highly suggest, you know, taking that soul time, taking that soul time, absolutely 100%, indulge in it, own it, hold it near and dear to your heart because this situation is a long-term situation. Whatever this is, it just feels like it cannot be, it cannot be fixed overnight, okay? And, and it really does it require your integrity to fix it. Um, or their integrity, right? Because you could be working with an air sign. There's a Libra, Gemini, more specifically in the major arcana, um, and Aquarius. But what I also see is this Aries individual, Aries being the number 33, uh, coming out really strongly in this, in this card, um, as well as this Mars Aries influence for, for this tower moment. Now, it just seems like I'm hearing not going without a fight 
And so that's been a very specific energy that we've all sort of been experiencing. Um, when we're talking about when we're talking about Mars in Leo, which is a very overly confident energy sometimes. When we have inflated egos or when we're when we're trying to get our point across or prove something, we can truly take it too far in Mars and Leo energy. And so what I'm seeing is that, you know, this situation may have already been taken too far because we have accelerated motion on the bottom of the deck. Okay, and again, I don't typically look at this in reversal, but it's telling me that I need to because this is a this is a energy that I'm following and it is karmic. It is karmic. And so you could be dealing with a karmic relationship um, that involves just heavy, just nitpicking back and forth, he said, she said, drama type toxic stuff, um, which is again, I think why you need some soul time, okay? Why you need to reevaluate this relationship because this love isn't acting so loving. This love isn't, um, you know, feeling supported. And you're not feeling supported by this person or they're not being supportive of you. And then we have emotional withdrawal, which is yet again another eight. Okay, so accelerated, accelerated motion and emotional withdrawal. There's motion here. There's movement here. And I think with the universe, you're kind of looking up like, why? Why? Why did this happen? How did this happen? Um, you know, if you didn't have fault in this, Capricorn, I do kind of feel bad for you because it, it does feel like you're really soul searching. You're really soul searching and you're really just trying to find yourself. You're just trying to find yourself, okay? And if you have to find yourself, don't go to anyone else for this. Do you understand? This is a solo sort of journey where you do have to look at your character. You do have to like sort of be your own judgment force there, um, you know, to say, what do I deserve for my actions? What do I deserve, um, you know, f for what I've contributed? Because in all honesty, I do feel kind of like this is a relationship or, or something involving a couple people because we have partnerships and alliances as well as new beginnings on the bottom in reverse, which is the Aquarian card of the Fool. Okay? And so this is really interesting stuff where we're, where we're talking about maybe where you had partnerships and alliances. This is maybe where you have fallen through. This is maybe where things haven't worked out. Because when we have emotional withdrawal, being a karmic number, it does kind of feel like you're taking a lot of this on. Like this is maybe due to an action that you had provided the situation. And so with this Capricornian energy, it does seem like you're, you're being asked to take responsibility. It does seem like you're being asked to remain strong despite temptation, right? It's, it's easy to get revenge. It's easy to get back at people. It's easy not to forgive. That is not the goal, right? That's, you don't grow that way. And that's just that simple. You don't grow that way. And it's not going to benefit you in the future, and it's not going to make you happy. That's just the point. That's the point I'm getting to. That's the, how I feel about this. So when we have um, partnerships and alliances with the fallout of the fool, like I, I'm hearing fallout of the fool, this is talking about not being able to redeem yourself in this. This is talking about um, having a third party situation, lies and deceit. This is talking about new beginnings because someone was really foolish, naive, or I'm hearing impotent. Okay, and that, 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 that word has actually been coming up quite a bit in, in readings, to be completely honest, because people are acting out of malice or acting overly confident, which, which neither one, you know, really work out in the long run. If you, if you really think about it, it's kind of like, well, you know, that may float your boat for a while. That may be the, the, the temptation that you desire is to just get back right into things, get back in the know, get back to where you were. You might miss people. Um, but that, to be completely honest, whatever I see this new beginning is, is spiritually guided so that you can grow. It's spiritually guided so that you can move forward. The detachment, the fallout, was really important because this tower moment in harmony is something that you're not supposed to be involved in anymore. And that's true, Capricorn. You're not supposed to be involved in this anymore. The universe has a higher plan for you. But if you continue to divulge in hedonistic temptations, you know, not gaining the closure that you need, needing to go back for fixes, um, obsessing over people or, or things that have, I'm here, oh, I almost said conspired. 
So if you're thinking about people who have conspired against you, or maybe you were a part of a, a partnership and alliance that, that went awry or sour because of something that you conspired, this is something you really have to think about. Because I'm hearing time out again. You're being put in time out or there's something happening in a relationship or with a group or, you know, with a roommate or with a karmic partner in your past or, you know, coming toward your future. That is a cycle that's wanting to close out. But you're being really stubborn, actually, Capricorn. For whoever I'm connecting with, you're, you're being a little stubborn. But what I see also is this could be, you know, your, your partner. This could be your partner. This could be the situation because I do see that, um, you know, you have love for this person. But again, what, with what I said before is that there's a lack of follow through here. And that's really something to think about because if you have love for this person and you're super devoted to this person, where are they for you? Where are they for you? Where is your true love here? And that's a really hard-hitting realization, actually, if things are that unfair. Now, you could say, well, it's the highest road to have unconditional love. Really? Unconditional love. Really? Are you sure about that? How far could this person take you? Interesting question. Interesting reading. So let's look at the tarot. How are you will how far are you willing to let them take you? That's an even better question. That's a soul time question. All right. Let's check this uh, Prosperity Begins card. Prosperity Begins. New beginning, foundational. I'm hearing movement, right? And we, we've said you would be moved. We said that you would be moved. And this is divinely orchestrated. Okay. Whoa. Jeez. Uh, Queen of Wands. Sagittarius. Aries. Very fiery energy. Leo. We're talking about this, we're talking about movement, okay? When we're talking about prosperity begins, as well as the Queen of Wands, it does kind of give me that feeling like this is a forced, this is a forced outcome because of maybe um, someone who in, enticed you or induced the situation out of egoic reasons, which unfortunately I think Capricorn, you got caught up in. You got caught up in and you made a wrong decision or something like that because if this is true and if this is the case, this Queen of Wands is still in reverse and she's not happy and the outcome isn't good. So we're looking at you actually being on the opposite end of the spectrum or maybe just across the room depending on how close you are with this person, uh, really thinking about why you sacrificed what you did. Because at, at, at the end of the day, this person actually may not have sacrificed enough for you or sacrificed, right? Like it seems really uneven. It seems really unfair. Yeah. Ooh, Ten of Pentacles. You guys, this is like, this is someone who um, does things out of egoic tendencies, very fiery, not really committed to being better, uh, malice, envious, insecure, okay? Um, firecracker, someone who erupts. Okay, they don't talk. And did you see her like fly across my face? <laughs> like that is someone who is uncontrollable and really imbalanced. So it's kind of sad, actually. It's kind of sad because we have you sacrificing your foundation for this person, potentially. You are sacrificing um, a commitment for this person or for the ego that's involved in the situation. So what this I, I am forgiving card really wants you to think about and soul time and synergy and discernment are all about what the hell did I do? What the hell am I going to do? Okay. We have harmony and disruption. So disruption of harmony, the tower moment and the lovers. 
Indulgence, okay, um, this could be very toxic actually. This could be really low vibration because what you're doing is not setting healthy boundaries. You're not, um, yeah. Whoa, is this two cards? Wow, this felt really heavy. I, that's so weird. I've never, never said that, never thought that about any card before. This is really a heavy card. Like, like literally when I picked it up, I thought there was three cards underneath it because of how heavy it is. And it's the five of cups. This is interesting because there may have been a water sign involved or s somewhere down the road or in the mix because what I see with the five of cups is that there's an emotional loss that is very heavy and it's very watery, okay? And this is um, scorpionic energy that takes a situation and hopes you heal from it. It doesn't guarantee, right? Because everything is left to choice here but it hopes you heal from this. It hopes that you learn a lesson. It, it hopes that you look at the devastation and you also look at what you have left and you become more grateful for what you have left. And you become grateful for the things that you didn't lose. And you become more aware of how it feels to lose those things and what it feels like to, to be at a loss. Because sometimes when we're in um, instant satisfaction and temptation where we actually can be so disconnected from our emotions, you know, like just wanting closure, like just really wanting closure, like right now, <laughs> that's the kind of feeling that I'm getting. But if you got it, where would you be? But if you got it and if you, if you just didn't have to work for it or if you didn't learn this lesson, would you do it again? This is how we learn situations. This is how we learn lessons, right? And so with harmony and disruption, it looks like some serious karmic baggage. We have uh, two fives so far, right? With synergy and with five of cups. This is already well over uh, a tower moment of sorts, right? If not, if it's not totally gone, this is like that, that, that close, okay? right? And, and if it's not you, then it's this person, right? Remember, you can switch up the roles, but if you're involved with a Capricorn cross watcher, this person is realizing that they made a big, big mistake. And if they're, if you're the cross watcher, okay, or if, um, I'm sorry, yeah, if, if you are watching for a Capricorn love, you know, this may be in the past where you guys had this falling out and it was for egoic tendencies and you guys lost everything. There was this foundation that just came to a crumble and your, your, your confidence was shattered. The Hermit. Wow. So this is totally your energy. Capricorn, I mean, totally your energy. With emotional withdrawal, we're looking at the hermit being in very serious contemplation, very serious contemplation. And I don't feel very lighthearted about this because this is such an ironic time for you to learn these lessons. When we're looking at the astrology, you kind of have to like laugh about it a little bit because it's like, well, universe, I, I do hear you. Okay, thank you for this wonderful lesson, right? Because this is teaching you whether you like it or not. It's teaching you. It's teaching you that sometimes we need our time away. Sometimes we really do need to really contemplate our decision making. And I think what this actually has done for you, Capricorn, is it may have actually thrown you into a dark night of the soul sort of energy. Like, um, you know, whenever we see the, the hermit energy, this is soul time. And, and sometimes your soul's not happy with you. And that's what creates the dark night of the soul. That's what creates a lot of shadow. This is the eight and the nine. So you you go from emotional withdrawal to a deeper place, believe it or not. You go from emotional withdrawal into, um, you know, leaving a situation, moving forward, you know, taking this in grace to, to like thinking really seriously about things because it's come to an end. So we have the, the Nine of Cups on the bottom of the deck, which is Wish Fulfillment. And, you know, this can be a card that really shows um, 
someone who's acted really smug. You know, someone who's acted really smug. And I'm hearing unhelpful. So you may have actually been asking for help. You may have needed help. Or you may know have someone who needed help. Either way, you're looking at someone who didn't take the high road or made, made a really negative karmic decision because they thought they were better. This Queen of Wands just makes me so mad. Ace of Swords. Oh, shit. This is what happened. Capricorn, we have disruption and harmony being overlaid with the Five of Cups. And the Ace of Swords just came out over it in reverse. Okay. So, gosh, let me get my stuff together. So, this was a lie. This was deceit. This is malice intent. This is someone coming in really swift, overly confident, I might add. You know, this is betrayal at its finest. This is like, who can, you can't trust this person. You can't trust this person, Gem. I almost said Gemini. I did say Gemini. That's really weird. I've been having these, um, these moments of just like, not even being in my own brain <laughs> Mercury retrograde. I'm so sorry, Capricorn. Um, you could very well be involved with the Gemini, okay? Um, so the Ace of Swords comes out because this Partnerships and Alliances card may have had also this relationship context. You know, when we're talking about partnerships, of course, this is the celebration card. But when the Ace of Swords comes out in this way, it kind of makes me feel as if this is what broke the, the, the relationship up you know this is what came into context as a big fat lie this is what came into context as you know this sort of I'm hearing souvenir just like someone's being really showy about something someone being like I got it you know it's like they have a souvenir of their their where they've gone but afterwards you realize they like like lied about the whole trip you know, like, I don't know why I'm getting that analogy. The, uh, this is really deep. The, the hurt. And, you know, the Queen of Wands, it represents travel, too. And so you could have, like, you could have been traveling. You could have been away. You could have, uh, they could have been away. You know, away from home. That's, that's totally what we're getting here. The Queen of Wands is away from home, or removed, or far away. And you're like, you're there holding down the fort for this person, Capricorn. You're there holding down the fort for this person, and yet their weight is dragging you down. We have you in serious contemplation of this relationship with the, with the woman in, in the wands, okay? Or the feminine energy, okay, coming through with the queen. Because it does seem like it could be it could be a relationship, okay, that's gone a little bit awry. And you're looking at this like, I was made for more. I was so made for more. Like, I can't believe whoever this is, it's like, I can't believe I let myself do that. Now I'm stuck as a shepherd watching a bunch of sheep. When I'm, when I'm so much more capable. And that's true. You know, whoever this is, they made a mistake and they are so much more capable. And I think, I think we all have to be a little forgiving. You guys, this is really no joke because I man, I really, I really feel, I really feel for this person. I really feel for you in this situation because we have the Tower moment and the Ten of Swords. This is a really, really bad mistake. This person is going to regret it. 
we have the Aquarian card of new beginnings. This new beginning unfortunately comes in the form of a really, really treacherous, exhausting, dramatic tower moment that is in front of everybody. And it's really embarrassing and this person isn't coping. This person isn't staying strong. This person isn't actually learning. <laughs> Which is, which is actually the most unfortunate part because with this Ten of Swords, they have already put themselves in the grave or they've already you know, put this situation in the grave, but yet they're still trying to revive it, yet they're still trying to like put on a show. Which doesn't have to apply to everyone. It does kind of feel like this person stabbed you in the back more than once or this, this person did the same thing more than once. And like maybe they were just used to getting away with it. And we have the kicker. Judgment. I'm hearing that some of you may not actually believe in heaven or hell. And if you're a cross watcher and if you're experiencing this karma firsthand, I think you're going to become a believer. This judgment is talking about a ripening judgment, not having the things that you want right away, right? And believe me, a Capricorn, I would love to stick up for you if I knew who this person was. I would love to stick up for you. I would have... I would have your back because it does seem like you got you got in a pickle here. But needless to say, this is a the wrong judgment of a character. Okay, so however this applies, someone made a big oopsie. And now judgment has come in the form of undesirable consequences. Capricorn, we're going to go to Vimeo to unpack this even more, okay? So my goodness, I hope that you have an amazing week full of healing, full of healing, really considering your next move. Don't, um, I'm hearing don't delay, okay? Doing something that will be good. Don't delay in uh, creating your, your good karma or making things right. Um, you know, even if it means you have to tell the truth and that's like a hard truth to tell for whoever this is, You know, because the lies have really accumulated and it's made it really a big picture, big picture kind of energy. So with the Ace of Swords, this is talking about those partnerships and alliances needing to know the truth. All right. All right, Capricorn, let's go to Vimeo. You guys can follow me over. The link is in the description box below if you would like. If not, I will see you next week. Thank you so much and have a great week. Bye-bye.